What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy, B-Hot Radio. Shout in, as always, I got my podcast partner off in this thing with me, DJ Toomp, the legend himself. Back what's good with it? Fresh in the flesh, man. Oh! Hanging out, dog. You hey. know the season changing. A little sniffles going on, but Come I'm all on. right, though. You Same know, thing keep here. keep the ginger in the system. And, oh, nigga, I've been coughing you know? up loogies all day week long, hey, so man. it made two of us in this thing. It's about 20 feet. It's just, whoa. Flipping like Mary Lou Redden, <laughs> laying on something nasty. <laughs> I mean, speaking of nasty, <laughs> though, to, right Uh-oh. now, uh, it's got nasty with Glorilla and Hit Kid. Ah, that producer and artist shit. Yeah, Here they go <laughs> again, boy. <laughs> woo <laughs> Hey, man, and when, I'm going to tell you, B, and when I see these write-ups, man, they just take me back to, like, everybody's going to go through it. If you're yeah. in this game and you, and you really love this game and yeah. you're playing on really getting it, you got to get ready for it. Every producer, if you haven't gone through it with an artist about yeah. a beat or the claim or the amount of publishing somebody's getting or, oh, they took this much, they had to clear this sample, so they try to leave me this much. It's going to be some type of um, just issues. disagreements and issues. It, it comes with it. So his main thing is what? Because I, I read it, but I really didn't. I haven't you know, gotten all the way they, into it. They type, yeah, you know, exactly. they type a different way, man. From what I got <laughs> off of it, these are some of the speculations that I've heard so far. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, basically, Hit Kid is saying that it's my damn song. Hit Boy, and now we got Hit Kid. They Hit Kid. Be- mm-hmm. He's saying it's my damn song, and uh, you done tried to sign it to CMG without me. So was he saying that he brought just the beat or he had the idea of the song? That's what I'm wondering. Uh, see, that's what I don't know. Glorilla saying she wrote all her lyrics. Uh, okay, she's, maybe her verses. See? Yeah, she she's saying that she wrote her verses, and she's also saying that you know Hit Kid <laughs> had supposedly already had sold the track to somebody, ownership rights to the track for somebody for uh, fifty thousand dollars because he didn't know it was gonna be a big old hit. Wow. So that's what she is claiming. So she's like, hey, man, just get up off me. Let me go ahead and do what I need to do with this record. Yeah. Because you already sold it. But then I don't know if Hit Kid has sold it or not or everybody's just throwing, you know, and mud. See, and that's why when I read it, that's why I'm like, I don't really understand. I, I what saw, the hell's I, going I knew on? that it was that situation, the yeah. artist and producer situation. Mm. But I was like, I don't know the details of that to really speak on it. Yeah. Because it's like right now, I'm still wondering, because a lot of times, you know, you got some producers right now, like myself and a few others who can make the beat. But sometimes we mess around and mumble some shit in the mic and the hook is there too. Ooh. And that can influence it. Either if it's just, we just mumbling, hey, bro, yeah. bro, let's go. Yeah. He might have had that in there. Or it might have been a sample with some girls or whatever. If he if he brought that song and it was more than just a beat, yeah. and his hook was there, yeah, he could say, hey, that's my song. But if it's just a beat, that's why I'm wondering if it's just a beat situation. And like you're saying, like he may have given somebody the rights to it yeah. for 50K or whatnot. Ooh, that's a hell of a situation. And there's going to be plenty more. Okay, Toom, as a man <clears throat> who's had songs go out of space, okay, mm-hmm. uh, what? how much money does he stand to lose if he doesn't, if he actually sold away his rights to that song? And that song continues to do what it's doing. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's infinite. Because, I mean, you could say you lose millions or you lose hundred thousands, but who could really gauge that? Because yeah. sometimes, you know, like you say, you just don't know what a song gonna do. Yeah. You got some songs that are, um, could do good just in the masses on getting airplay. Yeah. And, you know, well, I mean, who's really getting video rotation nowadays? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or so that song, it may just be that that instrumental. Boom, da, boom let's go. Yeah. NFL might pick that shit up. Shit. And that's a crazy sync fee. A Ooh. certain film company might be crazy about it. It may be a certain TV show yeah. who wants to use that. So where every time this show comes on, that song is gonna be on yeah. like Seven and Sun. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to really gauge how much he money he's missing. But that's why I was advised a lot of these cats, man, you got to really handle your business. Right there on the band. I mean, I'm not saying you have the um, paperwork ready while you playing beats for people. Yeah. But once you see that it's some traction, you know, hell, I want to see a nigga do that. Exactly. You know, going through beats. Hey, by the way, you, know, you got to sign this if you like number five. Six, exactly. We, Come on. Split sheet, like, nigga, Come on. ain't even signed yet. Ain't <laughs> <laughs> no budget here yet. Exactly. So, so it's kind of like, but that's but once you know and see that there's some traction and that song got some type of activity, it's about to get placed. 
Yeah, you, you got to start handling your business, either your manager or a good attorney. Somebody got to start getting that in line and breaking down, the, the like I say, a split sheet. Yeah. If it's a sample, who wrote what? 50%, 50-50, okay, boom, right? We eating and that's what it is. But it's kind of hard to say how much he's losing, but we could say a lot. Yeah. Because you just never know after, even after, let's say, let's say it could be four months from now and that song, No More Rotation, it may not even get played as much. All of a sudden, once again, like I say, some TV show, yeah, uh, executive producer of some show, or somebody may just want that record, yeah, and just the syncs alone is could, could tell you bringing money. Can you break down the sync game though? Because I mean, you was hitting me with that earlier, and I wasn't familiar with the lingo tune. So yeah, I mean, well, the what the hell going on with the sync? And they saying when they say sync, that's like you syncing your music with a certain scene in a movie or. Okay. Uh, TV show or um, or whatnot. So, and that's like uh, your song is getting played for a certain amount of minutes, like the beginning of Hangover. The yeah. first Hangover, yeah. they play Can't Tell Me Nothing. And that was like, you know, cool, like 50K. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, you know. You ain't have to do no extra work, I tell you that. Nah, that was just a song that already was doing what it does and and was still getting airplay. Yeah. And, you know, the video was getting played. Cause we caught the edge, end of the video days, like yeah. 07, 08. That was the last of the real, yeah. things really getting video royalties just from rotation. Just think, you had Rap City, yeah. BET, MTV, Go you know, and so- VH1. VH1, so you were playing on all these stations. Yeah. But, um, so when in a sync fee, yeah, it, it ranges, and that's something I learned uh, read my Donald Passman book, mm. and I really didn't know it until later on. I do the Doctor Lou Little soundtrack. Mm. I got a sync fee for that, and when that and that song uh, made got on the movie, and it wasn't nothing on the radio, but I still just off that one song alone called "Push 'Em Up." It's yeah. on the same album with the Timberland and Leah records that was on there. This song was pushed way to the end of the album, to yeah. where you had to really watch this movie, yeah, and say, "Oh, that's the part. That's the beat right there." Yeah, it's the part where the, when he. Realized the dogs could communicate or whatever. <laughs> I can't remember the exact scene, but just from that little sync, yeah, I, that I would say I generated a cool maybe like three hundred k. Not all at once, just yeah. in increments. You know, a seventy check, then come a thirty, then a fifty. It just kept kept coming. So, I mean, when you go to the mailbox, Toomp, and uh, those checks are showing up. How does that make you feel? It feels great, <laughs> dog. Knowing that, that she ain't got to drive up the road exactly. and make no, you yeah, know, a damn thing. And meet with no cats with money machines, you know. <laughs> no, that was fifty. No, this forty right here, man. Now we got to count this shit all over again. Damn. No more of that. You know exactly. what I mean? So it's just cool, just be able to uh, just really see it in a check. I ain't gonna lie, my first real check, man. I couldn't couldn't wait to show my parents, man, that that they really. That how much I appreciate them stand, standing and supporting my career. From, yeah. From the turntables all the way to, oh, man, I need some more midi chords, mama. I got I to gotta do some more shows exactly. and get some more money. Can I get I borrow 300 to go to, not rhythm, not Guitar Center, but Rhythm City Ooh. for my old school producers. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be in Buckhead. Mm. Right there, I can't, on West Peachtree, uh, East Paces Ferry. But anyway, I, can, I, I know the exact spot where Rhythm yeah, yeah. City was. Uh -huh. know, and that's where Guitar Center came from, Rhythm City. Crazy. So, yeah. And, that, and so, like I say, man, my parents supported that. But they whole thing was like, okay, you, you ain't going to college. You're doing this music. We see you on the turntables. You're making money DJing. But what about this production thing you're talking about? Mm -hmm. This one little drum machine is really going to make you some money? Yes, just hold on. Y'all just bear with me. Come on now. So I was, I'll stay there half time, but I had a crib out in um, Stone Mountain that I was staying at too. So just for my parents supporting that, bro. Yeah. And when I finally got a real check, I couldn't wait to show them. Like, see, I told you. Come on. And another one showed up. I'm like, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just, it's a, it's a great feeling, dog, to be able to do that for yourself and to really, you know, show the people who really supported you. It's a dope. It's exactly. A real dope, dope feeling. 